Hello everybody, in this video we are going to understand the OpenGL triangle. So we are not just going to render this triangle, we will hopefully understand what is going on and what is needed in order to draw this triangle. Uh, so if you are not familiar with the OpenGL triangle, it's like the hello world of OpenGL. Uh, it's just a triangle which, with the RGB colors and this nice transition. Uh, so let me first show you the setup that I have here. Uh, for simplicity, we are going to work with uh, with WebGL, but the concepts of uh, WebGL and op OpenGL are similar, maybe small syntax differences. Um, so I have a, I have an HTML page, which is basically uh, just a canvas uh, a canvas object, and my script. Uh, and when the DOM is ready, we are calling to the start method. This is the start method, and I just took a reference to the canvas element, and from the canvas I got the WebGL2 context. So you are prob probably familiar with the 2D rendering context of, uh, of canvas, but today we are going to use the WebGL2 rendering uh, context of the canvas. And I want to begin with the end, because in order to render in OpenGL, it's not like we will do a GL, draw, I don't know, triangle, and provide here the three corners of the triangle, something like this. Now, we are going to write a lot of code here that basically prepares the uh, uh, prepare OpenGL with the information that is needed to draw the tri triangle. And right at the end, we are going to call to the draw arrays method, which will actually do the draw. So I want to start with the draw arrays method. And by starting with the end, we will know where we have to uh, where, where we have to get. So this is the documentation of uh, WebGL in MDN. And again, WebGL, OpenGL, the concepts are, are similar for this purpose, uh, but the syntax is a bit different. That's why I'm using the WebGL, uh, uh, the WebGL documentation. So the draw array, draw arrays method, it has three parameters, mode, first, and count. So mode, it's specifying the primitive to render. Possible values are, points, line strip, line loop, lines, triangle strip, triangle fan, and triangles. So looking at these parameters, we understand that OpenGL can render only these primitives. Uh, so obviously we want to draw a triangle, so we will use the GL triangle as primitives. So this is the first parameter. The second one is first, which is an integer, specifying the starting index in the array of vector point. So we understand that from this parameter, we understand that there will be some array of vector points and we will have to provide the uh, the index of the first uh, point in this vector. And the third parameter count is specifying the number of indices to be rendered. So uh, if we have a vector of points and we want to draw a, draw a triangle which has three, three points, three corners, so this count parameter is going to be three. Okay, so we'll have to uh, write code that will prepare all the data so we can call draw arrays and, and provide, the, uh, provide the parameters. Uh, so now let's go to the beginning and let's talk about uh, OpenGL pipeline or the rendering pipeline. Now, this is not the complete pipeline, obviously, it's just the, uh, the major parts that, that are interesting to us. So it all starts with vertices. Uh, uh, we provide vertices to OpenGL uh, telling him uh, uh, this is the shape that we want to draw, or these vertices represent the shape that we want, the primitive that we want to draw. And we provide these uh, vertices in what I call the user land coordinate system. So we want to draw a triangle, so we will have to provide three vertices. And the coordinates in which we provide these vertices doesn't matter at this, at, at this point to OpenGL. Uh, so you can work in whatever coordinate system that you like. Uh, for this example, I choose to work in a, in a normalized coordinate system, which goes from 0 to 1. And the origin is the bottom left corner, which is 0, 0. Uh, you can choose to work on any other coordinate system. Like if you are working on an image, you can choose the, uh, uh, instead of normalized, you can use the width and height of the image, or whatever you want. Uh, but then, keeping this in mind, uh, comes the vertex shader. And the vertex, vertex shader is a program that we are going to write and it's going to run on the GPU. And the purpose of this program is to take the vertices, the, the vertices, vertices that we provided and convert them to the OpenGL coordinate system. Now, what is the OpenGL coordinate system? So the open, OpenGL coordinate system is a normalized coordinate system, but the origin 
is at the bottom left, but it's starting at minus one, minus one. Okay? And say that we choose to work with the same coordinate system as, as OpenGL, and here we instead of zero, zero, we will have minus one, minus one, and we provide the vertices in in this coordinate system. So basically our, our vertex shader will have to do nothing, just take the input uh, vertex coordinates and echo them as the output. But, see, but since our coordinate system is a little bit different, we will have to do the transformation from our coordinate system to OpenGL coordinate system. Of course, you can do other stuff in the vertex shader if you want. Uh, it's up to you. For example, if you want to flip the rectangle, you can take the Y coordinate of each uh, of each uh, uh, vertex and multiply it by minus one. I believe that this will flip the, the triangle. Uh, so this is this is the purpose of the vertex shader, shader just to provide the, the vertices of the primitive in the OpenGL coordinate system. The next step is the rasterization step. And in this step, OpenGL is going to collect all the fragments, uh, also known as pixels, that it will have to draw in this primitive. So it will take the three vertices that we provided, the three corners of the rectangle, and it's going to collect all the pixels that are bounded by this rectangle. And this is the rasterization step. We don't do anything here. Uh, after the rasterization step, where it has all the fragments or the pixel that's, that needs to be drawn, it will call to our fragment shader. Now, for each fragment, for each pixel, it is going to call our fragment shader. And again, this is a program that we will write and will run on the GPU. And the purpose of this program is to assign a color, an RGB and alpha value, for each pixel or for each fragment. And after uh, after it will process all the fragments, all the of the all the pixels of our rectangle through our fragment shader, it will continue to process the output and display it on on, on the monitor or on the on the drawing uh, uh, surface surface that we are using. Uh, so. Uh, this is the pipeline and what's important to remember from this pipeline is that the vertex shader is going to be called once per vertex so if we are providing three vertices the vertex shader is going to be called three times and the fragment shader is going to get called many times for each pixel that is bounded by our rectangle the fragment shader is going to get called so uh, keep that in mind uh, when it's coming to uh, performance issues and and stuff like that Okay, with that, let's go and write some code. So we'll start with the vertex shader. So in, in WebGL, we will uh, we will write our GL programs just as a, as a string, and then we will compile it in um, uh, with OpenGL. So we will have our vertex shader, which is just a template string, so we can write in uh, uh, easily in multi-line. And in the first line, we hint the compiler what version of, uh, uh, of of GLSL where GLSL is OpenGL shading language so we are hinting the compiler what version of the shader language we are using it's like any other programming language it has versions and it has some flavors so we will use version 3 and the flavor ES is the, the flavor of embedded systems WebGL uses ES as well as the uh, mobile phones I believe uses the, uh, the ES version so this has to be the first line. And then we said, here we mentioned that we are going to provide the vertices. So it's going to come, uh, it's going to come as an input parameter. So we define it as in vec2 and let's give it a name. So vec2 is, uh, uh, the vec data type is, is just a vector with two values and Position is the ver it's the vertex uh, position. It will have two values x and y. The reason that I'm having this a is because these input variables to the vertex sh shader are also called attributes. So we have the position uh, we have the position attribute. We are going to have another uh, vec3 input, which is the color. Uh, uh, vec3, the vector with three values, uh, we will provide it in RGB, and this is going to represent the vertex color. And let's talk about this uh, about this color thing. So our this is our rectangle, and we see that the colors are transitions from red to blue to green. So uh, the vertex shader has a nice property that it can interpolate values for you between the uh, between the vertices. So for each vertex, for each for each corner, we can assign a value 
in this case we in this case we will assign some color value but OpenGL doesn't know it's a color it, it's just it's just it's just a, a vector with three values so we are going assign, we are going to assign a vec3 for this corner which will represent red so in rgb it's going to be 1 0 0 the colors are normalized um, and for this uh, and for this vertex we are going to uh, to attach a value of blue which will be 0 1 0 let's let me write in in notepad uh, so the rgb vector is going to be like this this is red and the other vertex will get blue which is 0 1 0 and once we will output these values from our vertex shader it will it will look it, it, it will look at this two uh, the, on these two uh, on these two values and whenever it will take pixels or fragments that are in between and going to call our fragment shader it will pass as input uh, as input parameter and interpolated values between the red and the blue so for example if we start at the red and then we go to the very next pixel so the next pixel will get uh, will get maybe a value of something like this okay and the next pixel will get another value so all uh, all this interpolation of of the pixels uh, the pixels colors OpenGL is going to do it uh, uh, for us because we will output the values of the uh, of the vertices so uh, this is a nice property of the vertex shader um, so so for each corner for each vertex we will provide the position and we will provide the color and we also define here that we will have an output variable which is the color and then OpenGL will, will take this output and interpolate it for each fragment and call to the fragment shader with this value so this is the variable declarations and then we have the program now uh, the GLSL the, uh, the shading language syntax is very similar to uh, to C++ so we need to provide uh, as we said the the goal of of the vertex shader is to provide uh, uh, the coordinates of of the vertex um, in the OpenGL in the OpenGL coordinate system. So what we will do, we will take our uh, our coordinate system. Remember, is from zero to one, and the OpenGL coordinate system is minus one to one. So first, we'll take our uh, our input coordinate and we'll convert it to be um, zero. To two, and we'll do it. We'll do it by just multiply by two. To two, and we'll just subtract one. From 0 to 2 this is 0 to 2 and then we subtract 1 so it becomes minus 1 to 1 and then we can output this uh, uh, we can we can tell uh, OpenGL this is the coordinate so there is a global predefined variable that is called GL position and it's a vec4 vector with four values so we will provide our GL code space which has x y so we need to provide extra two values and we will provide zero for the z value and we'll provide one for w so this is x y z and w so if you want to work on a homogeneous uh, coordinate system you can provide a w as well and this is uh, uh, so we took our uh, our position in our coordinate system and transformed it to uh, to coordinate in OpenGL coordinate system and we will also uh, we need to output a color so we'll just say a color equals not a color this is the out color so color equals a color okay we just output the uh, uh, the color that we will provide and that is our vertex shader now let's go to the uh, fragment shader so here as well we provide by specifying uh, the shading language uh, 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 version and in the in in the fragment shader we also have to 
uh, uh, to tell the compiler what precision we want for float values. This is uh, required, at least in, in, in WebGL. So precision, uh, we will use a uh, high precision and for float. And you can read the documentation, what it means, the high, medium, low. Uh, it's just the number of uh, bytes it will use for, uh, uh, for the float values. And here, we are outputting a color, so this output color is going to get by OpenGL into our fragment shader, back three color. Okay, so so for each fragment, for each pixel, we are going to get a color, which is the uh, uh, and its value is going to be interpolated according to where this pixel is uh, in this inside the triangle. Uh, so uh, this is nice, and the purpose of the fragment shader is to provide. Uh, provide a color for this pixel. Uh, so we define an output uh, a variable, which is a color. And the program itself is very simple. We just say that out color equals a uh, color is a vector, it's a vector with RGB and alpha. So our input color is RGB and we will add one for the alpha. Now, you might ask yourself uh, why in the vertex shader, uh, when we need to provide the position, we have a predefined global variable GL position. And in the vertex shader, when we need to provide the, pick the color for the pixel, uh, we don't have a global global variable predefined. We had to define our own. So actually we do. I believe it is called GL frag color. And you can uh, uh, you can do like so. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is the name, fra GL frag color. But it is deprecated. Uh, so we are not going to use it. And we are going to use it with the... Uh, out color uh, uh, variable. Okay, so this is our two shaders, and this is nice. So the next thing that we have to do, like any um, like any program, we will have to take the source code, compile it, and then link it into into a program. Okay, so let's start with um, compile the vertex shader, and now all the work with op uh, uh, related to OpenGL, we are going to use uh, uh, the WebGL context, which, which is GL. We are going to use it uh, a lot. So, first of all, we need we need to create a shader. So we call GL create shader. And to create shader, we need to provide the type of the shader that we want to create. So it's GL vertex shader. So we created a vertex shader. The next thing is we need to provide this shader with the source code. So we call shader source, and then we provide uh, the first parameter is the shader itself, so this is vertex shader. And then the source, uh, this is the source. And now we can go ahead and compile shader and provide the shader, vertex shader. So we compile the shader. Now, again, like in any, uh, like in any programming language, we can have a, a compilation error. So we have a way to know if the compile was successful. And we call to GL, get shader parameter, okay? And the vertex shader, and then we need the parameter, uh, the parameter name, which is GL compile status. And now if it was not compiled, we can take the error as gl get shader infolog vertex shader and we can I don't know slow new error error compiling vertex shader the error and the draw is let's comment it for now uh let's see what happens so I'll open, I'll open the developer tools, the, the console. Uh, okay, we didn't get any error. Mm, let's let's remove a semicolon from here. Okay, so we got error, error compiling vertex shader, and we get the. Okay, I believe it's. Yeah, it's not really the line number, but okay, uh, color syntax error doesn't tell you much, but. Uh, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see if it's line number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mm, not really. So it doesn't tell you much, but uh, you really want to check for these errors and, and console log them. 
so we know that our vertex shader is compiled and is ready to go and now we can do the same for the fragment shader so compile the frag shader so here it will be frag shader and here also frag shader fragment shader i believe it is and we'll green this is our source and compile get the compiled status no need to really clear compile here if not compile uh, let's make it let so it will, will be scoped to this block and we get the the error message error compiling a uh, fragment shader shader and the error Okay, so compiling from each other error, color, syntax error. Mm -mm -mm. This is color in, oh, it's vev instead of vec. So you see, this was not intentional and uh, printing the error message messages uh, really help. So great, we have, uh, we compiled the, uh, uh, the vertex shader and, and the and the fragment shader and we can now go ahead and link them into an executable so an executable in in OpenGL is a program and we'll first have to create program and then we will attach a attach shader uh, we will attach shader to uh, to the program program the first is going to be the vertex shader and the Rug shader. So we attach the programs and now we can go ahead and link program program. Okay, we didn't get any error, but here as well we can check the status. So var, we'll check if it was a link, get program, get program parameter and program and instead of status it is link status and if not link so we have here get program info log and we pass program and then error linking program and error and uh, how will we fake an error so instead of attaching a fragment shader let's try to i don't know null okay fail to execute a touch shader on web parameter 2 is not of webgl shader uh, this is not our linking error <laughs> okay i'm not sure how to how to fake a, uh, how to fake an error for uh, for the linking but if if we will not attach fragment shader Linking program, no compiled fragment shader, shader at least one graphing shader is that. Okay, so if we created an error. Uh, we see that uh, we got this error from here, error linking program, error linking program, and then no fragment shader. So we'll bring back. We know that our uh, uh, logging is working for the linking errors. And that's it in terms of the program. So we have a programs with a, a program with vertex shader and, and a, a fragment shader. And the next thing that we uh, we need to do is just to supply uh, supply the position of each uh, vertex and the color for each vertex. And I think we will have our triangle. Okay, so next we are going to create the vertices data buffer. Uh, in order to provide data to uh, to OpenGL, we are working with what uh, uh, with what called buffers. So let's create uh, the vertices data buffer and this is just gl create buffer so this just create buffer on on the gpu uh, the next thing that we want to do with this buffer is to actually like activate it so there is a method bind buffer and let's look at the documentation so bind buffer uh, Bind buffer method of the WebGL API binds a, gif a given WebGL buffer to a target. So what is, what is a target? 
Um, so target uh, specifying the binding point target and the possible values are array buffer, element array buffer, blah, blah, blah. So array buffer, buffer containing vertex attribute such as vertex coordinates, texture, data, and color data. So this is what we want. We want to use the GL array buffer. And then we need to provide the buffer itself. So this is the vertices data buffer. Now, let me uh, uh, let me explain this bind thing. Uh, so OpenGL, you probably heard it, and if not, it's a state machine. Now, what it practically means is like imagine we have a, we have a machine with a lot of uh, knobs and dials, and we need to to, to dial uh, dial it the machine before we actually uh, perform any operation with the machine. So this is what we are doing now. We are just turning the knobs and dilating the machine. And and this machine has slots. And each slot is dedicated to some uh, operation. So GLRE buffer, it's a slot in it's a slot in the machine. Okay, in the documentation they call it a target, target or binding point. But think of it as, as if you have a machine and you have a slot in, in a machine which is dedicated to some purpose. So Array buffer is the slot in the machine which is dedicated to to buffer containing the vertex attributes, and this is what we want. So we created a buffer, and then we took our buffer and put it in the in the slot that is dedicated to provide a, a, provide a, a data for a vertex attributes. So this is the bind vertex, and and now our our buffer is is inside this slot. So any operation. This is data, and this is going to be a float array, float32 array, and let's see, what, what are we going to have in this array? So for each vertex, we need to provide the coordinate and the color. So let's start with the first coordinate. Uh, we didn't say what our coordinates are going to be. So if this is the screen, and we said that uh, this is 0, 0, and our triangle will be like so to here and then from here to here so this coordinate it's in the middle so x is going to be 0 0.5 and y is at the top it's going to be 1 and here x is going to be 1 and y is going to be 0 okay so this is our three coordinates and for this vertex we are going to choose uh, the red color and for this vertex we will choose the green color and for this vertex we will choose the blue color okay so first vertex is going to let's do curl so the coordinate is going to be a uh, zero zero and the color is going to be red which is one zero zero and let's write here color now we'll do the uh, we'll do the green one which is 0 0.5 and 1 this is the XY and the color is uh, 0 1 0 and the last coordinate is x y x 1 y 0 and the color will be blue so this is our vertices uh, data this is the first vertex this is the second and this is the third and now let's take this data and upload it to uh, to our buffer so we have gl buffer data so we want to provide data to a buffer. And again, we need to say what's the target. So the target is GLRE buffer. So we are working on this slot and we know that our buffer is, is inside this slot. So this is good. Uh, the next is going to be, uh, there is an overload here. Uh, we are going to use the second one, which will provide just the, uh, uh, the buffer. So this is vertices, vertices data. And the last parameter is the usage. Uh, so if you look at the documentation of our data, uh, so uh, this is the, the overload uh, of WebGL2 and usage. Uh, 
specify the intended usage pattern of the data store for optimization purposes. So it's only for optimization, it's not critical uh, uh, for the functionality. And the first one is static draw. The contexts are intended to be specified once by the application and used many times. Uh, okay, so this is this is correct. Uh, we are providing the vertices data only once. So it's static draw. And now we uploaded our vertices data. We uploaded into uh, the GPU to our vertices data buffer. And this is all nice. Now, what's important to understand here that OpenGL understand nothing about our data. For OpenGL, this is just a buffer. This is just a blob of memory. Uh, the fact that we write here a coordinate and color and first first ve vertex, second vertex, etc. It's very nice in our commenting, but OpenGL doesn't know about it. So what we have to do now is we have to take this blob of data and describe it to OpenGL. And this is what we are going to do. Okay, so we are going to describe the vertex shader attributes. Um, so this data needs to go into these attributes of the vertex shader, the A position and the A color. So let's start with uh, let's start with a position. So first of all, we need to take a reference to the uh, to the attribute. We do this by calling to gl get attrib location. We give the program and the name of the attribute a position. Okay. So now we have a reference to this attribute. Okay. To basically to its location and the next thing that we need to do is we need to enable this attribute. There is an able vertex attrib array, and we give a, a position. So what is enabling a vertex attribute array? The fact that we declared here two attributes doesn't mean that by default they are active, meaning OpenGL will not look to pass data into these attributes because by default they are not active, they are not enabled. So what we are what we are doing here, basically tell OpenGL, okay, activate this A position and expect to pass it uh, data. So this is uh, enabling the enabling the attribute. And now we can tell it what data provide to provide this attribute. And this is done by a method GL vertex attribute pointer. And the first parameter is the index of the attribute. So this is the A position. Uh, the next one is the size. So let, let's look about, let, let's look at the documentation for this method. So this is like the most, I think, complicated method that, that we have. We need to describe the data. So index is just the index of the attribute we, that we got with the get attribute location. Next is size. Specifying the number of components per vertex attribute. Must be one, two, three, or four. Now, the key term here is components, okay? How many components from our data we are going to pass into this uh, into this attribute? So a position is a vec2. It has two values, two components, x and y. So this is, we will put two here. So this is the size, the number of components. Next, uh, what is the type? Uh, so we have byte, show, unsigned byte, blah, blah. So we created a float array. So this is a GL float. The next parameter is normalized, whether the data is uh, normalized or not, it is not. So we just pass false. Uh, then we have a stride. Stride, specifying the offset in bytes. Okay, so now we are not talking in components, we are talking in bytes. Between the beginning of consecutive vertex attribute. Okay, so basically what, what it means is from, if this is the data for the first vertex, and this is the data for the second vertex, the stride is the number of bytes between the beginning of one vertex to the beginning of the next vertex. So let's see. For each vertex, we are going to have one, two, three, four, five values. Each of them is float, which is four bytes. So the total is 20 bytes. What is 20 bytes? Says to OpenGL that if you are at the beginning of a vertex data, you can jump 20 bytes and you will be at the beginning of the next vertex data. Jump 20 bytes again and you will be at the next, at the beginning of the next vertex data. So this is, uh, this is the stride. And then we have offset. Specifying an 
often in light of the best component of the nervous algorithm. So once we got into once we got to the beginning of the nervous data, so inside this nervous data, uh, where the actual data for this algorithm begins. So for the coordinates, the x, y is at the beginning of the nervous data. So there is no object. So we pass it zero. Okay, uh, uh, so this is the vertex attribute pointer. Uh, it's, as I said, it's the most uh, 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 it's the most complicated method like uh, to understand. But once you get it, it's uh, uh, it's not such a, a big deal. And now let's go ahead and do the same for the color attribute. So let's copy, paste. So the next one is a color. So we get a reference to the attribute. Then we enable it. Tell OpenGL that hey, this is a, this attributes expect to get a, a data. And next, let's desc let's describe it. So size again, it's the number of components. So now we are going to have RGB. We are going to have three components. So this is three here. Uh, it's float. It's not normalized. Uh, the stride. Uh, so the stride is the same because this is inside the same vertex data. Uh, so it's jumping from the beginning of the vertex data, uh, which is which is 20 bytes, but uh, the offset is different. So if we are at the beginning of our vertex data, uh, the color data starts after the X and Y. So this is four bytes for the X, four bytes for the Y, and the color data starts here. So the offset is eight. And now, op now OpenGL know that when he is at the beginning of the vertex data, he will jump eight bytes and it will take three components uh, for the color. So we described we described the color uh, attribute, and I think that we are ready to go. All left to do is tell OpenGL, hey, we want to use this program. So remember, it's a state machine. So before we call a draw method, we need to tell OpenGL what program is going to execute, and we are back to our uh, to the beginning of the video where we talked about the draw array. So let's look again at at this method and see if we understand draw arrays so the first parameter mode is which primitive we want to we want to draw so it's a triangles okay the next one is count and the next one sorry is first so specify the starting index in the array of vector points so this is this is our array of vector points Okay. If we take if we we'll take this data and using the description that that we uh, the description that that we gave here for each attribute, so OpenGL will look at the uh, will look at the data, will look at the at the description that we provided for each uh, uh, for each attribute, and it can it can see that it, it it's an array with uh, with three elements. Okay, and this is basically our array of vector points. So we want to start with the first point so this is zero and the last one is count specify the number of indices to render so again if this is our vector point we, we have three uh, three elements so we want to render uh, we want to render three so we'll get a three here we'll save and ta -da, we got our uh, we got our rectangle now for the sake of uh, uh, of learning so here at the draw array uh, let's say that we start from uh, from the first and instead of the zero index, we're going to start with one. So see what we got. So our triangle started from here. Uh, so it started from the green, then it started, it, it went to the blue, and there is no third, uh, there is no third vertex. So instead of uh, crashing, it just provided always zero. Uh, so it gave this uh, uh, zero, which is black. And we return it here to be zero. And we got this triangle. Now, as if the video is not uh, long enough, I want to take it a step further and see if we can animate the colors a little bit. Um, so in order to animate the colors, uh, we'll have here a function. Function, let's call it function step. And we're going to call this function step in an in interval, set interval step like every 30 milliseconds. Okay, this is not the be best practice when you want to animate, you should use a, a request animation frame, but for this example, this is enough. And in every, uh, in every, in every step, we will uh, we'll draw the array, okay? But we will change the colors data of each, uh, uh, of each vertex. 
and we'll see what happens. So here inside step, we want to re-upload uh, only the color data. We don't want to change the, uh, we don't want to change the, the coordinates them, themselves, only, only the color. So let's start by splitting the vertices data. Uh, we work hard on this uh, describing of the data and now we're going to break it. So we don't have this, we don't have this. And we lost the triangle. So let's fix the description here. So this was the stride from one vertex to another. Uh, so now we have only uh, only two floats. So in order to jump from here to here, uh, you have to jump eight bytes. And the beginning and uh, the offset is zero because it's the, in the beginning of the vertex data. So we got the triangle back with funny colors. And now we want, let's copy. We, we are going to create another buffer uh, with another data for the colors. So we'll take this, copy it here, and let's call it color data buffer. Yeah. Okay, so we are creating the new buffer, and now we are uh, uh, we are going to put the new buffer inside the array buffer slot. So the vertices data buffer is no longer in this slot. It's now uh, this buffer is in this slot, and let's define uh, define the color. So it's going to be RGB, RGB. So, and RGB. So this are the color, and we are going to upload. So this is not vertices data. Let's I don't know colors data, color data, colors data. We are going to upload the colors data uh, into the uh, into the buffer that is currently bound to the array buffer, which is our color data buffer. And we are going to change this, uh, we are going to change this buffer on every draw. So if you remember in the buffer data documentation, the usage parameter, uh, we had static draw and there is also dynamic draw. The content are intended to be re-specified re repeatedly. Okay, so we are going to re-specify it. So we'll use here dynamic draw. Again, this is just for optimization. Uh, it doesn't mean if, uh, if it will not not work because of because of this. Uh, so we uploaded the data, and now we need to to redescribe the meaning of the data. So we get a reference to the attribute color. Uh, again, we have three components, but here uh, 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 the stride between one vertex data to the other. So to jump from here to here, we need to go uh, three floats, which is twelve bytes. And the offset is zero because the data is at the beginning of at the beginning of the vertex data. Okay, so our triangle is back, uh, uh, meaning uh, we did here uh, we described the data uh, the data correctly. And now let's do. So we want to change uh, we want to change this. Uh, so let's take this. Let's comment this and comment this. Okay, so what is going to be the data here? So let's define a, a let's define a bucket, which is going to be zero a one zero zero. So what I will try to do is yeah. What I'll try to do is we are we are going to start to start with these colors the RGB, and slowly we are going to transition from here. We are going to transition from red uh, to blue and then from blue to green so the corners are going to change color uh, uh, slowly um, so we have the we have the bucket with with this value and now here instead of hard coding one we will actually tell it use bucket index zero and here one and here two and we'll do the same so the next vertex is going to start uh, from two, then zero, then one. And this one is going to go from one to two to zero. So you can see that the starting point is the same. We have a, a one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So, so the start is the same. Let's uh, draw arrays. Let's comment this. And let's call this step only one time. Okay, so, so we got the triangle. Now we want to move, we want to start to take this one and slowly uh, transition 
here to zero and here to one. So from uh, we have from index uh, zero and to index one. So we are going to transition from index zero to to index one, and then we are going to transition from index one to index two, and then from index two to index zero. Uh, so we upload the data, we draw, and after we draw, we say that a bucket at from index, we subtract, I say, I don't know, 0 0.05. And we are going to give the bucket at two index, we are going to give him this 0 0.05. And now we check if the from index is below zero meaning the transition from one index to the other is finished so we can move to the next index so we are going to increase the from index now we cannot just increase it by one because we are going to get an overflow we need to do it in a cyclical way so we are doing modulo three so the from index will go uh, like zero one two zero one two zero one two and we'll do the same uh, to the two index Okay, so we are transitioning from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to 2, and then from 2 to 0. And let's see. So now instead of rendering only one time, we are going to render uh, many times. So the set interval. And voila, it's, it's working. So uh, the vertexes are changing the color from a red, green to blue. This concludes our... Uh, our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.